need that, but I'm back. All right, everybody. So what was that stupid little demonstration about? Well, yeah, what do all three shots have in common? Ask yourself that. Now, let's give you some background. I used a 40 pound bow with a 600 spined arrow. I used a 30 pound bow, fiberglass, with an 800 spined arrow. And I used a 50 pound bow with a 500 spined arrow. Now, I randomly grabbed them. I don't really have anyone for one. So I used three different bows, three different arrow combinations, same target. That is a 12 inch by nine inch window and all three arrows hit the animal. But what's the one thing that all those shots have in common, right? And that, if you've seen the title, you know what it is. The consistent thing in all that was my shot cycle, right? Having a consistent shot cycle, a repeatable shot cycle can greatly help you. Now, I hear a lot of people talk bad about gap and gap people and other people talk bad about instinctive and everybody except for string walkers talk bad about string walking. You know what? How you shoot is how you shoot. I can instinctive. I shot instinctive for many, many years, right? But you got to know what you're trying to do. One, let's look at it. This is how I look at it. If you want to be a target archer and you shoot instinctive, I hope you don't want to win, because that's not going to happen, all right? The top archers are all using string walking. Now, people say, but look at Rick Welch in 3D. Rick Welch, when's the last time he won, right? Nothing against, it's not saying it's wrong, but if you want to win or compete, you should do what most people that are winning or competing are doing. They, it's just, you know how it goes. Look at the Lancaster Archery, the classic in the bare bow division. I heard from a trusted source, there's only two people there out of 125 that didn't have um, composite bows, right? Two people shooting wooden bows. What does that tell you? Wooden bows just aren't competitive. Now, I'm stubborn. I would go there and shoot a wooden bow. <laughs> All right, but I understand by using a wooden bow, I have reduced my chances of winning. And if you think I'm wrong, enter the Lancaster Classic and go win it. Right? Don't just talk smack online like I see so many people do. Go out and prove everybody wrong. All right? It's not saying one's better than the other, but if you want to win in a certain event, if you're going to win competition, an aiming method increases your chances. That's it. Nothing more. Nothing less. Doesn't mean it's better. Now, what I'm going to go now, and I'm going to show you some things. I can shoot instinctive, I can shoot gap. I also shoot a new one that I call gap tuitive. And I'll explain to you that next. All right, gap tuitive or gap instinctive. Gap instinctive. I like gap intuitive a little better because it's not an instinct, right? Breathing's an instinct. Um, it's real simple. I don't need to know the range. That's one of the criticisms I hear about gap. Well, you need to know the range. No, I don't. Right? Because gap tuitive, I look at it, and my mind just knows roughly how far it is, just like instinctive. So I know generally where my arrow has to be. Right? Looking at this target, I know my arrow is going to probably be right around his belly. That's it. I don't know the distance. Didn't I just did a quick look. My mind just picked it up. So boom, like that. So I come up, set myself. Look, draw, aim, shoot in, or right on the 10 ring. All right, I didn't sit there and measure it, but that's what, you know, so, so people that talk bad about gap saying you can't do that, you're wrong. You can do it. Now, instinctive, or snap shooting. You can't do gap snap shooting. All right, let's try it. Look at that, All right? Now, I don't practice snap shooting. Now, if I probably put the arrow where it needs to be. 
I know my gap. I knew where my arrow had to be. So I just looked at it and I shot. The first one was poor, the second one's a lot better. But you can use gap and snap shoot. Totally easy. So let's put that to rest. But what made me what allowed me to do that? What allowed me to snap shoot and still shoot reasonably? That's right, the common denominator of a good, solid shot cycle. Now up next, we're gonna have some fun, right? I'm gonna try to show you again the importance of a good shot cycle. All right, everybody, now on the next one, see what happens. Now, none of this I have practiced for. I'm just walking up and doing them. I know you can make the call, how do we know? Because I just told you, all right? I have no reason to lie to you. I mean, one, am I making money off this channel? No, I haven't monetized any of these videos. Am I doing it for fame and fortune? No. I'm doing it because I had questions. And there, no one ever answered them. No one knew what they're talking about. And then when I got serious with it a few years back, everybody had opinions and everybody slamming each other. I got a whole slot of, of arrows. I got a 540 grain wood arrow. I got a Predator 2 800. I got a GT Trad 600. I got a Blockbuster 3050, and I got a GT Hunter 500, all right? I got a deer out there. You know, see what happens. Now, Jimmy Blackman, who I really like, and is one of the guys I, that's who I learned to gap from, from his videos. He came out with a thing on how you should train. He uses the acronym RAT, right? First thing you gotta do is get a repeatable shot cycle. Hey, what the video is about. Then you learn how to aim. Then you tune. But everybody else does it backwards. Tar. Right? They tune, aim, try to get a repeatable shot cycle. And you know what? I guilty. Right? So try to get the repeatable shot cycle first. Don't worry about the rest. Shoot instinctive, whatever. You're gonna see gaps will start coming. Then when you want that accuracy to hit that 10 ring on a more consistent basis then you can start thinking about tuning. And that's when you can start thinking about tuning and aiming, all right? So, remember what I said about gap distinctive? This is a 50 pound bow. I really don't know my gaps. But my gaps on all my bows are very close, all right? Because how I have my knock point. So usually around 15 yards, about 18 inches. I know that. I just generally know that. And that's why I said I can shoot gap distinctive or gap tutive, because I know, I look at that and go, Real quick, I'm about 18 inches. Knee, kneecap. For deers, like that, the medium sized deer, I always know if my arrow's by their kneecap, I'm not too badly off. So that's how I can shoot without knowing the distance. I just know generally where to put my arrow. So let's see what happens. A little high. All right, this is the Blockbuster 3050. This is the GT Hunter 500 spine. Ooh, flew pretty good, huh? Predator 2 800's super hyper kinetic velocity arrow of death. And finally, Slow poke, 540 grains of wood awesomeness. Totally, totally different arrows. So that was totally inconsistent. What was the one consistent thing that I had going for me? My shot cycle. And that is what a decent shot cycle, a repeatable one, can help do for you. It can make up for some errors. You know what, but too many errors, nothing can make up. That's my point, but consistent, repeatable shot cycle. All right, one more, and we'll wrap it all up. All right, what was different on that shot than all the rest? All right, what do you think I did different? Well, one, I shot from the wrong side. I shot right-handed. All right, I normally shoot lefty. So how can you shoot right-handed? Because I have a set shot cycle and I walk through the same steps. Now I'll talk about that in a second. 
see if I don't screw this one up. All right, so that's another key why the shot cycle is important. Now, I tell you the key I talked about in a second. If you're gonna shoot left-handed and right-handed, here's the beauty, it's not transferable. What you do with your left side does not automatically mean you'll do it with your right side. So if you're shooting lefty or righty and you wanna switch sides, you can have a fully new customized shot cycle. All right, that's one of the cool things. All right, I'm gonna go up and get my arrows, we're gonna take a seat, and I'll finish my babbling for you. All right, everybody, so all that is just to make a point, you know, and it's a point that people argue. And I made the video because I see people on the forums talking about it and attacking other people. And a guy in my last video attacked me saying, I'm full of bullshit. I'm bullshit. You're blah, blah, blah. Dude, anybody want to come out and shoot with me? I'll shoot with you. You beat me, I don't really care. But I'm not a slouch. I'm not the best. But I do, when I speak about something, I know about it. All right? I don't just learn it and then put a video out on it. I learn it, practice it, get it down. Reinforce that it works. I actually try it on a couple other people, share what I've done. If it works for them, it tells me something. All right, and I go around, I, I ask questions. I'm a big question answer. I always ask people questions. Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Probably annoys people, all right? So I'm trying to put out videos and information that's good for you. Now, why am I saying that? Because having a shot cycle is good for you. It, I, my opinion, it is the singular most important part of archery for you. All right, you get a good shot cycle, and I'm telling you, you'll know that day comes. When I first started 3D archery, my whole goal was not to miss. Great goal, huh? Not to miss. It wasn't to hit, it was just not to miss. So I was hoping that I wouldn't miss. Then after a while, learning, working on my shot cycle, still shooting instinctive, my goal became I was going to hit the target, right? I went from hoping I wouldn't miss to knowing, all right, I can hit this target. Then, as I got better, got my shot cycle down, I started to aim. And then, I was thinking, I can get at points, you know, like an 8 or a 10. And then in the past couple of years, now I expect 10s. I'm wanting a 10. I expect a 10. If I don't get it, yeah, you know what, I'm happy hitting the animals still. But I know that I have the ability to get tens, right? So, it makes archery a lot of fun. Like I said, if I miss it, I don't. And if I, some days I just go out and I shoot, I couldn't care less. I go out and shoot right-handed, tens are out of the question, all right? I'm back to, hope I don't miss this, <laughs> all right? But it's all about fun. So if you want to get better, you want to get serious, and you want to compete, or things like that, work on your shot cycle. All right, boys and girls, sorry for the babble. I'm just expressing an opinion that I firmly believe in. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time with an all-new episode of Archery 101. Mm -hmm.